Have you ever tried debugging an application which has been poorly logged or which has not been logged at all? Then you know the importance of logging. Hello guys and welcome to my channel. In the previous video, I showed you how to create an S3 bucket using Python Boto3. We didn't handle the exception, which is very bad. So we are going to start using best practices and we are going to handle that in this video. We won't just end there, we are equally going to create a log file so that we can log everything and everybody who uses our application later on is not going to have a headache. Okay guys, so here we are in the AWS console and as you can see, these are the buckets we created last time using Boto3, this is it right here. The one we created using the, CL, the CLI and then the last one we did with the console. So I'm going to go back to my PyCharm and we are going to see what we did. So this is what we did last time. I just uh, formatted a little bit, but the concept is the same. We created a bucket and here we printed the response. So I'm going to print response. Okay. So this is what we did last time. So. If I run this, uh, run this um, code again, we are going to have an error. And let me just run that. That is it. We get this error. And as you can read, that is because we already created a bucket using the name bucket created using Boto. I can go back to my console and this is it right here. That is why we have that error. Remember, you cannot have a bucket with the same name globally, so it has to be unique. And uh, yeah, it's very ugly having this statement here. That is because except the exception has not been handled, and that is the objective of this video. So to handle the exception, we are going to enclose this in a try and accept. So I have try. I'm going to tap this. And here I have accept. And what am I going to accept? I'm going to accept Boto call dot exceptions dot client error. I'm going to call it error. Okay. Then here we are going to just print the error as of now. I save everything and I run it again. Okay, let me enlarge that so that we can see. Now our error has been, our exception has been handled and you don't have those ugly red sentences. So we have prevented our application from stopping abruptly. This is the error which has been handled and it is being printed here. The exception which has been handled and the error is being printed here. That is fine, but we can do better. Rather than printing it like this, because when you are deploying, when you're building an application which will be deployed in production, it's not best practice to use this print statement. Use this print statement in uh, when you're developing for it to help you. But to build good applications, we are going to be logging the errors. And to do that, we are going to use the model which is called logging, Python's logging model. So I have imports, logging, Okay, and once I've imported the logging, I'm going to create a method right down here, which is going to create a file so that I can log all my things into a file. I'll call the method logger, and I'm going to make this method to take two parameters. The first one is going, I'm just going to call the first one uh, log level. Sorry, not with a dot on the score. And I'm going to call the second parameter message. Okay, once that is done, we are going to log into a file as I told you before. So I'm going to go back here and this is the documentation here. As I told you, most of the time, I just like going to the documentation in order to have first-hand information. I'm not creating anything. So I'm going to copy this. We'll go back to our application and I'm going to paste it here. And after pasting it, I have to give the name of my file. I want, I want to lock everything into a folder. So I'm going to create a folder right here, new directory, and I'm going to call it locks. 
okay it hasn't been created or what what happened i can't find it i didn't create it so directory logs okay now it has been created this is it right here so rather than logging it into a file in my root directory i want to log it into this directory right here so i'm going to have logs slash s3 i'm going to call my file s3 app okay s3 app.logs so once that is done what am i going to do down here with these two parameters which i have i'm going to do an if statement and if control to see what this log level is and based on the log level which has been passed i'm going to print different messages so let's do that if the log level is equals to error we are going to use logging dot error and we are going to pass the message okay then the next thing we are going to have else if the log level yeah sorry i'm using java <laughs> this is l if okay the log level is equals to debug here we are going to print logging sorry not in capitals logging dot debug and we are going to pass the message okay then uh, we go to the next one and if again if the log level is equals to info what are we going to print here we are going to have logging dot info and we are going to pass the message as well then we are going to have the last else here no elif as well log level equals to what is the last one i think it's warning or something like that yeah warning warning okay then we are going to print logging dot warning okay then message right here so our method is good now down here instead of having print i'm going to implement this logger i'm going to come here and i'm going to have my logger which is this one and i'm going to pass in error because if it's an exception then i want to print error and here i'm going to pass the error message i copy this and i put it right here okay then here if everything goes on well i want to print the message the response but for now i don't really know how the response is and this one is supposed to be a string so i'm just going to print the response when it works and i'm going to take it from there everything seems to be fine we save it and we run the application again run okay now let's go and check our app.log file so as you can see our file was created right here i'm going to open it so that we see what happened if you can see we have error we have root and then we have the error which has been printed right here interesting right and we equally have it printed here because this is oh uh, we still have this print error okay but there is something i want us to do i don't really like the way the error is appearing here i want to type uh i want the time to be printed as well so we are going to adjust that we are just going to go back to the documentation and we are going to come right down here where we have 
okay, where we have the format. So we have the level and we have the message. I'm going to copy this format and we are going to put it in our basic config so that, okay, I add the format there. So we have the level which is going to be printed with this two dot. We have the message, but I equally want to print the time. So I think I have to add something else. I'm going to go back to the documentation right here. We're going to scroll down and we are going to get this time right here, this ask time. So I'm going to copy this. I go back here and I'm going to put a time just before the level. And after that, I'm going to put a column and a space. I'm equally going to add a space and a column. There is already a column here. I'm going to add a space. Then the next thing I want to copy is the format. I want my date and time to be formatted in this way. I'm going to copy this. You can change it if you wish, but I'm going to leave this format for demonstration. Okay. I put a comma here and I paste it, but I don't want the PM to be there. The PM or AM to be there. I'm just going to leave the minutes, the seconds and the hour. Okay. Everything seems to be fine. We are going to save that and we are going to run it and see how our log file appears. Where is, I'm going to run it again. Okay. We go back to the log file and uh, this is it right here. As you can see, we have the date, we have the time, and then we have the level of the error. That is fine. Now let's go back to our application and there is something we need to correct. Given this print, uh, print response, I don't really know how this is printed. So I want to be able to get a message from here and I'm equally going to log that into my file. To do that, I need to change this bucket name because this name already exists. So I'm just going to use Boto3, given that that is what we wanted to type as, at first. And uh, we are going to print the response, that is fine. I run the application again. Okay, everything is fine. And I have my response, which is formatted as a dictionary of dictionaries. So this is the response metadata. And if you check the response, you're going to see we have this HTTP status code 200. I want to be able to control this code. And if the code is equals to 200, it means the bucket was actually created successfully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I copy that and I come here instead of printing the response, given that I want to log into my file, I'm going to write an if statement, if response, and what do I have? I have this response metadata and I want to get the HTTP code as well. So I come here. No, I copy this. I come here and I paste it here again. Okay. If the response HTTP status code is equals to 200, what am I doing here? Oh, sorry. I'm typing on the wrong place. I'm going to remove this control X. I'm typing on the wrong place. Okay. If it's equals to 200, because we have an integer, what do we want to do? We want to log. So I'm still going to have my logger. And what am I going to have in my logger? I'm going to have an info. And what is the info message going to be? It's going to be bucket created successfully. Okay, so that is going to be my log message. And else, if the response code is not equals to 200, I want to print something else. So I'm going to have else. I'll have logger. And inside here, I'm going to have debug so that we know the bracket was not created successfully. 
And here I'm going to have a debug message. Bucket not credit. Okay. I save everything. And uh, given that this one has already been created, let's go to our console and we refresh this page. You see, we have bucket created using Boto3. We cannot use the same thing if we want to check the status code because it has already been created. If we try, we are going to lock an exception. We can try that given that we have our exceptions handled. Okay, you see, bucket already owned. And if we go here, we are going to have a second error message, which is this one. Okay, so now we have to create another bucket to test the status code 200. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to type test two. Okay, I save it and I'm going to run it. I have to format this so that we don't have that funny formatting. Okay. Everything is fine. Now I'm going to run it. Okay. We don't have anything which has been printed here. But if we go to our log file, you have an info which is bucket created successfully. Yeah. Isn't it beautiful to have your log file? been uh, handling all your logs this way so everything has been created if you go here we are supposed to have a second bucket which has been created with test two and uh, that is it we have bucket created using boto to test two so that was it for this video guys thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to thumbs up subscribe share with your friends and let's keep coding Bye bye